What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today we're going to take a look at and review a brand new loaded 2017 27 inch 5k iMac. Now it's not quite fully loaded, but it's close. So the 2017 iMac is the first refresh of the iMac since 2015 and they now ship with the new KB Lake processors and upgraded GPU with eight gigabytes of video memory. We also have quicker DDR4 RAM with the 2017 iMac and just faster read write speeds on the SSD drives. All right, so let's go ahead and get this bad boy out of the packaging here. And of course the packaging for this iMac is top notch. I mean, just typical Apple, it came in a big brown discrete box with the big iMac box right inside. And you can just see how big the box is here for the 27 inch model. I believe the box weighs 30 pounds. The shipment was 30 pounds. So of course we have the big white seal here to peel off and then voila, the Mac covered in tons of styrofoam and packaging to ensure that nothing gets damaged in transit. So after finally getting the iMac out of the box, there's still more to go. There's still more to take off. You can see here we have the plastic covering the screen, of course. And then once you peel that off, there we go. We get the iMac in all its glory. You get to see that beautiful screen. So now that you can actually see the iMac and its screen here, let's go ahead and talk about the specs and what I got in this iMac. So this is the 27 inch 4.2 gigahertz quad core i7, which I highly recommend by the way over the i5 for the small price difference. It's really just a no brainer in my opinion. I kept the RAM at the stock eight gigabyte because I'll be upgrading that myself for around half the cost in just a couple of minutes. So I also selected the 512 gigabyte SSD drive. I also definitely recommend the SSD configuration over the Fusion Drive if you have the budget. It's a lot snappier for all tasks and it's also much quieter. But of course, if you want the speed, you're gonna have to compromise storage. Now storage isn't such a big deal for me because I use external drives for pretty much all my video storing and editing. So, you know, 512 gigabytes is enough for me. But of course it may not be for you. It just completely depends on how you use your computer and where you save all your stuff to. So anyways, let's go ahead and continue looking around the iMac. So if we flip it around here on the rear end, you can see that the new configuration with the 2017 iMac. We have a headphone jack, an SD car slot, four USB three ports, two Thunderbolt three ports, and a gigabit ethernet port. And then right in the middle there is where the power adapter goes. And then directly above that is where the RAM is located. And we're gonna talk about the RAM real quick. So as I mentioned earlier, this year we have much faster DDR4 memory as opposed to the slower DDR3 memory found in last generation's iMac. So I bought 32 gigabytes of RAM from a third party and saved myself over 300 bucks which I definitely recommend. Again, everybody, if you want to get more RAM, buy it from a third party, don't buy it from Apple, you're gonna be severely overpaying. So both the 21.5 inch and the 27 inch models both ship with just eight gigabytes of RAM stock. So, I mean, I don't know about you, but that does not even seem close to enough for anyone looking to buy an iMac. So I'd recommend at least 16 or 32 gigs but 64 gigabytes of RAM is the max. All right, so to install the RAM on the 2017 iMac is just stupid simple. So first thing you wanna do is unplug everything from the computer and lay the iMac down face first on a towel or just the white material that came with the iMac like I did here. Then you wanna use some type of metal or just tough object to press in on the button right there to eject the RAM plate. Then you're gonna pull the little levers outward to bring the housing up towards you. Then you can go ahead and insert the RAM sticks in there and just push down and you're gonna be able to tell when they're in place. Just kind of pull up and make sure they are in place before you go ahead and shut the plate. So once you have the RAM sticks put in nicely, go ahead and move the housing back in and then put the back plate right back on. The back plate's a little bit tough to get on, but you'll get it. So now we're ready to boot her up and go ahead through the setup process. And while we wait, here's a look at the keyboard and the Magic Mouse 2. Now I didn't go for the full keyboard, but I believe it's only like 30 bucks extra. So if you want the full keyboard with the number pad, you should definitely look into getting that with the new iMac. All right, so now that the iMac is set up, I wanna do a few things first. So the first thing I wanna do is check the memory and make sure that the RAM was installed properly and showing up. And then I wanna run some CPU and GPU tests. So it looks like I did install my RAM correctly. And you can see there I have 40 gigabytes of RAM now. And now for the benchmark. So the first benchmark we're gonna run is a good all around test with Geekbench 4, which we're gonna be testing both the single and the multi-core. All right, now that was super quick. So you could see the numbers are pretty impressive. So we got a 5501 single core score and a massive 19,534 multi-core score. Now we're gonna test the disk read and write speeds, which is always very interesting. So you can see here on the right side of things, we're writing at 1,966.7 megabytes per second and reading 
peaking at 2,321.3 megabytes per second. And you can see the numbers down there for the ProRes 422, the Cinema Raw, and the 10-bit YUV. And then finally is the test I've been waiting to run, which is the GPU test. So this iMac is rocking a Radeon Pro 580 GPU with eight gigabytes of video memory. And this is the strongest graphics card ever put into a Mac. Now, of course, this isn't the best GPU on the market by any stretch of the imagination, but it's solid for a company who's just pretty much notorious at this point for terrible graphics performance. And actually in some of the tests consisting of exporting 4K video, it was found that this new graphics card is 75% faster than the R9 M395 GPU found in the last generation iMac, which had just two gigabytes of memory compared to this year's eight gigabytes. So if you do any kind of creative work like video or photo editing, or if you game on your Mac, getting the best graphics card is just a must. So anyways, back to the GPU test. You can see here on the OpenGL test, we scored at 117.84 frames per second. And for the CPU test, this iMac scored a 903, which is pretty solid for a Mac. And if you're at all familiar with this test, you're gonna know that these numbers are definitely suitable for gaming. And I've actually done some gaming myself with CSGO, Portal, and Borderlands on Steam, and it's running perfectly. And this may actually be the first time ever where you could just look at a Mac and feel confident and gaming on it. Now, of course, the people that hate Apple and hate the iMac are gonna disagree, but if you are a Mac user and you're interested in games, I think you can agree with me here where you can just look at this Mac and for the first time ever feel confident in gaming on it. So the internals of this iMac are amazing and I can tell a big difference in performance compared to my old iMac and then of course my MacBook, which also has an SSD installed. But now let's go back to this beautiful shell on the screen on the iMac. Let's just look at the overall aesthetic of this new iMac. So of course the iMac is still hands down the best looking all-in-one computer on the market fully built with aluminum and a screen that just looks amazing. It's a 5K display, like I mentioned earlier, so watching videos in 4K is just a breeze. And the display is actually 40% brighter than the last generation 2015 iMac with a much more vibrant color profile. So this is as good as it gets with an Apple computer right now. Now my only aesthetic complaint would have to be the bezels around the screen. Now this is not a huge deal to me, but I would have loved to see a bezel-less iMac. I just think that that would look amazing, especially a 2017 inch iMac. But hey, maybe in four years, that will be a thing. Now, of course, the front of the computer has that Apple logo that's always looked great on the front of the iMac ever since its inception. And then below the front lip of the iMac are the speakers, which face downward. And I could just say that these speakers are actually very good sounding. I was actually genuinely surprised at how good they sounded. Going up to the top of the front panel, we have the same old 720p HD FaceTime camera with an LED light and an ambient light sensor. And then moving around to the back, we have that big, bold Apple logo near the middle. And if you look up to the top, you're gonna notice that the microphone slits are gone. And that's because Apple actually moved them from external to internal. So the dual mic setup is actually now on the inside of the iMac in the front bezel, somewhere near the Apple logo on the inside. So overall, the 2017 iMac is a beautiful all-in-one computer with some strong internal power to back up the looks. So if you're looking for an all-in-one computer, perfect for creative work like video or photo editing, and also some gaming, there's never been a better time to pick up an iMac than now. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for some more 2017 iMac videos coming soon. And of course, I also make videos on iOS and jailbreaking and things like that as well. So if you're interested in that, make sure to hit that subscribe button. But anyways, thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.